Welcome back to Bulletproof Mindset, Scotland's number one health, fitness and entertainment podcast. So in today's episode, we speak about body dysmorphia. And I was going to say we're no licensed therapists, but we was some from a experience point of view that both me and James have dealt with firsthand. But as coaches and personal trainers in the health and fitness space that is riddled with body dysmorphia, we share some of our best points and feedback that we have kind of observed ourselves. Now, this is all opinion, right? This is our opinion and our clients' opinions. So if you do not agree, then we totally understand. Yeah, but the, I don't let that I definitely hear our views out first because we don't we don't necessarily get controversial with this. But in the health and fitness space, you'll see the the when you think of health and fitness, you think of six packs, shredded, big muscular men and women, however your outlook is. But we are we are trying to change that message because there's a lot more to benefit from working out and lifting weights, getting stronger, and being healthier. And that's our message. So if you're watching anyway, you're as well leaving us five star reviews on Spotify and sub uh, subscribing on YouTube as well. And if you want some free downloadable guides that's going to help you with your body dysmorphia, take that focus away and look at your training aspect. We have a free 30 day workout program that could be honestly used for 60 days, 90 days, but you're going to see some badass results in terms of your strength, your resilience, your confidence. So check that out. The link's going to be below. And let's just get into today's episode. So speaking of physiques... How are you feeling with your physique tonight? So when mental health takes a bit of a dip, you fucking, you start to feel like you've, everything goes to shit. Hey. My mental health dip was very short and sweet. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was dipped. <laughs> it was dipped. Went to hell and back. I went to, I went to hell and back. Do you know, I actually think I needed it. As, as mad as it was. Hmm. So strange. Like, we had that conversation last week and I was just like, oh no. But then I've had like four consultations this week with new clients and uh, the confidence I've got in my, my product. I'm it was like, only three, it wasn't last week, mate, it was three days ago. No, no, it was the conversation we had on the Saturday, I'm right. talking about, right, that's okay. what spurred it on. Hmm. You're like, well, what I do this, 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 I'm like, I don't, I'm not even confident in my product, but like selling my product the last, the last week, confident in it. And I think I needed to get through that, do you know what I mean? I knew, I, I knew I had these calls coming up. And uh, like I knew obviously the goal, the way I wanted to go forward, and I was like, I don't know, I don't know. Like I was like, I don't know if I don't know what for this anymore. I was like, I don't know if I've got this in me. I don't. Delivery driver jobs looking better and better <laughs> each week. I was like, <laughs> fuck. I was like, fuck. I was like, am I? Is this the right thing? Like I know it sounds so fucking so fucking daft, but I'm like, is this the right thing? Can I really like change people's lives? I'm like, what is everybody else doing? I'm like, don't know, man. My head was just going blah 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 blah. Go to the calls and everybody's like, that sounds fucking great. I'm like, hey, good, good, good. And I was like, as soon as everybody's in, I know they fucking love it. And yeah. I know they... You have the the trait of going zero or 100. <laughs> you speak about this all the time. And there's no in between me. It's <laughs> there's like, no in you go zero or 100. So like, you can't even float in the middle. No. And you can maybe, there'll be elements of your life where you can float in and out. But when, when shit has the fan, it's like, nah, it's either, that's a load of shit or, right, I'm fucking all in. Nah, yeah, 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 I yeah, was yeah. actually going to see if you opened up this episode, like, James is back. No, no. <laughs> I was I, saying to my client I, the other day, at, uh, Ian this morning, I was like, see if he comes on that podcast and says that. And he's like, he said that like eight times on that I, podcast. I, was I like, actually never left there. <laughs> I just had to deal with that. I, I, I've no left because it was like, I'm, I, I just had a wee dip mm. for a couple of days. That's why, so that's why I'm, I'm asking because, the whole topic of today's conversation is going to be around body dysmorphia. We Aye. all deal with it. Aye. And maybe know the the clinical definition of body dysmorphia. Um, so I don't think either of us fall into that category where it's there's therapy needed necessarily to deal with that. Maybe, maybe, I mean, there's no harm in everyone getting some sort of therapy to deal with anything. But yeah. we all deal with looks as social media driven. It's the age of technology, just how we view ourselves. We want to look good, we want to feel good. Um, but more importantly, health and fitness is geared towards six packs, eight packs and all that sort of stuff. And I've dealt with it and you've dealt with it. Um, but when other things in life, so it had nothing to do with your looks and nothing to do with your training. No. It was business side of things. Yeah. Did, did you feel it affecting your actual, like we're uh, looking at yourself in the mirror and going, let's stay to you, you fucking dick. I, I've actually got to the point where I don't look at myself in the mirror if I feel that. Mm. Like I don't. Like I go right fuck this. Taking all the mirrors to <laughs> the, <laughs> facing them down. But I actually feel like I look all right quite a lot of the time anyway. Like mm. I feel like I've got a really good relationship in my body compared mm. to that. But when I used to feel like that, 
I look at myself in the mirror and go, fuck, it's so small. Mm. So small, man. Like, what the fuck? How, how, but like, right, I think right now we speak about fitness so much that, and we speak about if you have a day off, it's all right. And it doesn't, and like, it, it's ingrained in my mind that it's impossible to lose size and strength that quickly. Yeah. I'm eating all the food. So it's ingrained in my mind is knowledge that if I look in the mirror, it won't be different. And I think it's, I've done that, spoke about it, we spoke about that so Aye. much that I so don't, okay. don't see any different. But I know at that time that I'm not going to be looking at myself and going, yes, I look class because I don't feel good. Mm. I go, oh, I look good, but what's the fucking point? Yeah. You know, like I don't really, I don't care about looking good, you know, I'd rather feel better mm. in that kind of situation. And ironically, that's a tricky thing with us as coaches, which mainly comes from people in the fitness space. You train to look good, you train to look good. And then shit. Some some something in life comes up where it throws you off. It could be business, right? And you're looking good, but you don't feel good. No. You're like, I fucking feel horrendous. I can't kind of stick to my two hours of cardio a day. I can't kind of stick to my shitty diet. I never sent you something the other day. Yes, yesterday I seen it, mate. I nearly lost my shit. I nearly lost my shit. Uh, I wouldn't go into who. Don't necessarily like a guy's content. Won't lie. Don't know. I don't know the guy personally, so I don't know how he's actually like in person. Everybody Fitness knows. influencer. Fitness influencer, right? Irish. And I was, aye. Did I can know you're talking Did about. Did you see it? Did you see it? Is, is he in like, he's party aye, he's show? Aye, 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 aye. Mate, the worst videos I've ever seen. So, I was like, what are you, what, you are fucking people's minds up with shit content like this. You are the I don't sh- know what video you're talking about, but if it's the same guy, the video came up a couple of months. Fuck, fuck it. I'm thinking Tony Michael, Michaelini, is that who you're talking aye, about? Aye. So, I don't, I don't know the guy personally, so you can always preface this. And this is a hard thing about short form content. You watch it and you're like, that guy's a dick. Aye. And you write him off completely. But I've seen some of his stuff before and it was it was okay. The personality difference to what his content was before to what it is now and the views on his stuff now is through the roof. And I'm like, is that who he is now? Or is that he's just playing into Aye, he's just the playing, persona? He's just playing into the persona. But I honestly watched his video the other day. His caption was good, mm. but his video was terrible. What was that about? What one was it? Eh, uh, you don't need to squat and deadlift. Squat bench and deadlift. Uh, squat bench and deadlift. Regressed his training. He said, <laughs> and but his caption was, "You don't need to do these big lifts. Not no uh, ex- so. no no exercise is mandatory." And I was like, "Fair enough." Like mm. the caption was good, but the video was not. Aye, so it's the execute, and this is f- it's for clicks. Is it's it? for viewers, he's jumping on the wavelength of like what's the height, what's going to get more traction and this is, we spoke about this before, we've caught ourselves doing it. No, but like, let's so, just go blatantly after like a so, certain thing. So uh, Alex, Alex or, Codwell, yeah. he put up yesterday like fucking people who fucking slander exercises pissing me off and I messaged him, I said is this about an Irish guy? And he was like, yeah, isn't he actually? I was like, well, because I, I, I was thinking we used to do this mm. but I think as you get into it you go that's a terrible message Aye, it's not It's not what you do because we deal with everyday people and this is when I, I hope that I never lose that that connection to like it's not even everyday people it's just people in general and it's not a good message to turn people away and if Aye. if somebody's doing spin or somebody's doing crossfit and they'll poke fun <laughs> left right and centre but mm-hmm. if that's their their way of exercising I'm all for it and Aye. I need to think like Eugene Tail, like he was like watching his content, it's very balanced and he does very he balanced. does his he does his own take on here's why squats are great, here's why the leg press is great, for example. Aye. Um and the title might be Squats are bad for your back. So it gets everybody in, but he's ba- he's balanced throughout that so whole So that's what I was going to say, like, when we've done like these exercises are poor, like black we've explained that uh, you can still Burpee do it. still is a shite exercise <laughs> and leg booty things on the it's a, I've never like unless somebody can come on and go look here, here's a study that I've done for eight weeks and look at the size of my arse, like Aye, nah. just do a dumbbell step up. <laughs> like, like there's no point to use that machine for yeah. that purpose. I know I catch myself it's it's a hard game, like it works clearly, right? But I don't know. It integrity works, integrity works wise, I like he's a he's a whole different guy now. Ah, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. like the he's I, he's he's almost appealing to the wee younger guys. Yeah, it's me as a young guy seeing him like the guy's five fuck squats. I, fuck I don't need really fucking do that. So me as a young guy hearing that, what am I going? Squats are fucking hard. And then I see this guy who's jacked message coming up and I'm like, ah, yes. I don't need to do I that. don't need to do this now, but it's the skill of the, learning those the movements. Bit I was like typical. Oh, when I when I when I used to bench, I used to get a sear shoulder. 
wonder why then. Well, you were a shite at benching. <laughs> I wonder right? why. So you must have been shite at squatting. So you must have been shite at their lifting. But guess what? All the bro splits are like, oh, my shoulder hurts. <laughs> my shoulder hurts when I bench. That's it. It's because of that movement. It's the bench. Shite. It's the bench. Yeah. So th- this is why it, you brought up, it was a guy like, I don't know if he's autistic or whatnot, but so he's got like, Ryan j- j- aye, so this is what I didn't like about him. Because he's like, don't like, he was all optimal. He was a, more like the other extreme, but he was the optimal guy. Aye. And it's like, what the what's optimal? Like, wh- so what, why are we speaking what to I would, like this? What I kind of like about his content is he's like, I'm a bodybuilder, I want to do this for bodybuilding. Mm. Right? I'm like, cool. Whereas you don't know what the fuck they do. And then they're like, oh, but I date for bodybuilding in the comments, but your video clearly doesn't state that. Mm. Your page clearly doesn't state that. He's like, I want to do this for hypertrophy. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? Fair. But I can get why if you're really young, it's going to be like you're watching this. But I, an average Jill and Joe watching Ryan Jill's videos is going to be like, I don't know what he's talking about. Because like, he talks dead fast <laughs> and he goes right scientific into <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. like, the biology and movements of the muscle. So interesting enough, I've seen another one of Tony's videos and he's getting shit in the comments because he didn't have abs. Yeah. Like people are giving him a hard time. I've seen that. And I was like, interesting. So body dysmorphia. Certainly is more prevalent these days. We've had it in some of our comments, remember? But I actually think it's scary when you look at somebody like genuinely like Tony. He's fucking clearly ripped. Big guy, obviously he is short, but he's fucking in some nick. And there is actual people in the comments saying, you, Do don't, not look give that, it, you I, don't look that good. I, you don't look good. I, you don't look like you lift. And you're like, what do these people expect? It's trolls. No, but, well, no, but I think? think these people are being serious. I think so. I think these people are looking at him and going, he doesn't even look that good. What was he, what was he getting his opinions for? Yeah. I felt bad because I did actually see a guy, right, and he, he was quite small, mm. right? And he was like, I'm mad. I don't know what, I, when they're Irish, they've got this attitude about their videos. Arrogant. Aye, it's like, <laughs> I know what I'm doing and he went for it and he went for I went against a lot of pull down and he was like, ah, I don't need to be fucking doing that. <laughs> And the first comment was, mate, I'm definitely not taking advice off you. And it had about double the amount of likes as his video. Uh, and I was like, ah, man, this guy is getting yeah. slaughtered. It's part of the game, man. It's part, part of, the, of game. the game. We were, what was the one we done and you got it? The pre-workout one. Aye, so, but what was the comment? The guy making actual video? No, what is it? Because he made something, did he know? Oh, remember, mate, remember aye, 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 aye. He actually aye. made the video about aye, you. Aye. What was it? I can't remember. Because it was it was along those lines. And I was like, mate, no, and it wasn't even no offense. He goes, hear everything you're saying, but I'm a fuck taking advice to that guy with the glasses on. <laughs> and then you replied to it, and it was the top off. And then he said something back, like it was almost like a double comment that you that that we had said. Mate, to him. I was like, Dan, all that left, and he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. It's uh, ego bruising right there, man. Is uh, this guy being for real? Uh, or is, is he? Is he being serious? But aye, so it brings up a very good point because perception of what is the ideal body shape? What is the like? What is everybody wants to get bigger and more shredded? And and I understand that. Like, it's it's attractive. Like for like <laughs> whatever you're attracted to, but you're looking for the sculpted glutes, as we said. Like, there's there's going to be appearances that are sought after. Like your like forearms and men like is is one that i I seen a video with a guy he he asked like 100 girls in the high street and she was like what's your favorite muscle part and girls were like that of of a guy girls were like bum legs forearms and then it wasn't like chest and shoulders i was like that's changed for like (laughs) 10 years ago when i was just smashing chest and shoulders when i was in high school but it's it's all it's all in your mind and arms is a big one so it's, it's the aesthetics of of that and and through chasing those aesthetics and that purpose or that those aspects and those attributes like there's ways of doing it but most of us start having an unhealthy obsession with it and that's yeah. really where it starts with Absolutely. it all starts with the mindset and how you're getting into it yeah. and I think we're all probably driven into we all get in for the exact same reason uh, it's why I look better for the opposite sex yeah. or the sex we're attracted to exactly this you know is why I started with 50 push ups and 50 sit ups one comment and third year in high school Dale's got an eight pack. I was like, oh, fucking I'm going. going for an eight pack. I, <laughs> I, I, I am fucking. I am fucking. I'm going for it. it. And and I don't know if it, it wasn't. It wasn't just all about getting girls. It was like it felt good. It felt good to get those compliments. Aye. And that's why when you were amazing. you were saying about starting your fitness page and that and how that can be quite a dangerous territory to go down as well because aye. you get a lot of hype at the start and then it if it's all I it dies off and you start going, oh, I'm not good enough. And, and it's not that. It's just it's the social media game is hard. Mm-hmm. So. Let's kind of break down 
body dysmorphia then so your your experience with it you've you came from another side haven't you you've been too small then is really has it been opposed to what most people's has probably been um i'm really overweight or i don't like the shape that i'm in aye, i'm too aye. fat i'm too whatever aye. so you came from that side so but very quickly i think thankfully both of us have nipped it in the bud from quite early on which no. probably makes us good coaches i know that like bef- see when i used to train like before i had that year and a half half mm. my body's more was high as fuck mm. really high so i would quit and I, I can look back on everything been reflecting a lot about my life re- life recently it's no 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 fantastic but it is what it is but i've been able to look back and i was like look i used to train to get girls and then i'll get a girlfriend and i go i don't really like train that much there <laughs> And I would, and then I would start relationship. Wait, that's where it comes from. I would start dipping. I was like, right, hmm. but back then I couldn't really piece together what was happening. It was like, cause I had only one. My main purpose was to look good for the opposite sex. When you're going out with somebody, you're not really getting compliments from anybody else. You're only getting compliments from one person. You're like, right, well, I was only doing it for that reason. So I'm not as well training that hard. Unless you're a big flirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's how your relationships don't last, people. Eh? Yeah, don't be bastard. <laughs> But then you're like, right, so I won't train that well. And then you're trying to get back into it. And you're like, what? Do I look? You're like, I don't actually know. But then it was like constant pictures, taps off all the time. It was just like consistently looking at yourself. When you consistently look at yourself, that's when you stop seeing progress because you don't see progress day to day. You don't see progress week to fucking week. So if you're looking at yourself so consistently and you're focused on looks, I need to look good for such and such. I need to look good for such and such. How do I look? How do I look? How do I look? And then you're like, how do you actually look? I don't think I look that good. I'm like, I'm training hard. And then you have a week off and you're like, well, I, must, I look like shite. Aye. You see it instantly. Aye. And you're like, fuck. And interestingly enough, I guarantee every single person listening to this, you've, had, you've got a picture that you can look back on and you can vividly remember telling yourself you don't look good enough. And when you look back at that picture, you're like, huh. I'm a lot better looking than I thought. I remember my mindset being in that. Aye. And this is why this all starts around mindset. It all starts with where are you, where is this coming from? What is the the reason behind the aesthetics? Because on the other hand, like it's it's good to have an aesthetic goal because if you look good, you do feel good. But there's ways around kind of manipulating that a little bit to Aye. have a more sustainable approach and healthier outlook on your on your body image as a as a whole. And to it's arrogant to think that you're going to be at the same shredded and leanness all year round because you see these social influencers or uh, fitness gurus or um i don't even know what else what you'd call them but Just people I, pe- I people are at the top of the the food chain in terms of their awareness and their likes and their pers- the, the just the personality that you follow online and they're shredded all year round and you start comparing yourselves to them yeah and you said something there like you're like oh my mate like it's not been a great week but i let's move on but again you want to think it's a great week because it's 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 the same with everything we compare ourselves to other people Aye. and that's the thing that robs us what is it comparisons it's the thief of, joy, yeah. of joy and that's what robs us of actually that this is an okay thing that's happening just now it's because of x y and z and i can either make a decision to do x or go down y Aye. you know what i mean so the the mindset going into this or the mindset of your body image is where it all stems from and try to change that mindset can be very tricky it can be very challenging to do but there is little steps and little tweaks that you can make to your training um that i i've made personally over the last what age am i what age am i 29 i know i'm turning 30 right i know i know i know i I was keeping it what are we on oh getting there it's a month today Oh, and then it's nearly Christmas, mate. And then twenty twenty three is over. What is going on? We got a Dublin next week as well. We got a Dublin next week. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck knows. So, since I, I can't, I actually can't remember when I competed. I think it was six years ago, seven years ago. Since that stage in my life, that was the best and the worst thing, I guess, that could have happened. But this is all your outlook in life. Because if I had left that competition, I could have. That was a that was a horrendous day. As much as I had the confidence to go up on stage and got my wee medal and all that sort of stuff that could have easily led me down a darker path and this is why i think us as coaches we are riddled with body dysmorphia for for this one reason body um bodybuilding in general is inside out all about body dysmorphia because you're going up on stage to be judged by other people to tell you you look good you win you don't look good you don't win no matter and every single one of them have common traits 
They fucking train hard as fuck and they're disciplined as fuck. Now, arguably their training is absolutely terrible. Their diet and approach of how they apply cardio and all this sort of stuff, fucking just borderline, like, obsessive. But one thing they do all have in, tra- in common is that those common traits. And you think, okay, I've smashed this for 16 weeks. You've pushed your hormones to a, a, an unhealthy amount of fucking stress. Mm. You go up on that stage, and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good. And you start looking about, oh, they look better. Oh, they are, their shoulders are bigger than mine. Oh, man, his abs are more developed. Some some people's body features are just going to be that way because of their genetics, and yeah. you're never going to get there. You're never going to beat them. So here's where you start. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining from a bodybuilding point of view, and no one gets as extreme with it but it's the same thing you start comparing yourself to other people and you're like okay i've i've a transformation for example i've lost a good bit of weight and you're like yeah look at that look at that before and after yeah i'm really proud of that and then you look online you see the fitness influencers that are the best fucking, ones ever aye the lighting's different they're all tanned up and they're like oh i've not done good enough when yeah. you've actually done extremely well and should be extremely proud so you're almost robbed of that yeah. and and that's where it's it's really hard so Back to, you've grafted in your bodybuilding show, you step up, and you're like, right, okay, you start looking about, and you're like, okay, they're bigger, they're that, it's like, right, I'm going to give it my all, and then you finish dead last, or you don't place, or whatever, think of the, the mind fuck that goes through your brain, and this is where, like, the whole David Goggins was like, nah, like, train harder next time, so what happens, you train harder, you eat worse, you, eat you actually eat more worse, I, I, you dial everything in to a point where you're eating, like, wee bits of Cocoa Pops, you know what I mean? <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck am I doing? It's exactly that, man. And it's just, it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. And I, I honestly don't know why. And I still remember, I remember where I stood in Pure Gym and where I was looking in the mirror and that constant analytical view of, oh man, I need to get bigger, I need to get bigger. And then after the show, when all that stress was away, I was like, I look bigger than I was fucking trying to peak for a show. Aye. And I was like, right, okay. And then I had to catch myself. I don't know. I actually don't know why. I think I just lost the love for, for doing it. I was like, that wasn't worth what I wanted to do. Because I've explained before that the coach that I worked with, it was a very standard approach. Do hundreds of cardio, cut your food. Like that, it was really much. It. I didn't know my calories. But also I was, I could have asked, but I never, I was never really, I was, I was just like, here, I'm paying you money. Help me with this, Aye. and he and he got me from A to B. But getting from A to B can look so so different, which is the strategies that we'll get into to help you help you overcome that. But I feel like every go to PT and coaches kind of it stems from that stems from something similar to that. Aye, I think that's like if you look at a coach and like it's all about aesthetics, then I think they've still got like deep rooted issues when it comes to their body. You can see it. You can. You can. And there's people that are good friends of ours and we'll see them like how they're communicating online and I'm like, you're, you're actually struggling with your body dysmorphia. Aye. I can always tell with the caption, forget what the caption says, what the video is about. They look good in comparison to, well, it's that's an individualised question as well, but they're in great shape, they train hard, they're strong and it's like feeling a bit bloated today. So like, why do you need to start with that? Aye, aye, aye. Or um, uh, looking a bit... Um, fluffy today and it's like what like that's your insecurity that's coming out mm-hmm. there was no need to say that yeah, yeah, yeah but putting that out there into the world it starts going oh ah oh, right fit aye okay right well, I I feel like is, we've all got insecurities about lots of different things but when you go into that realm then the biggest thing about you the biggest thing that you see every day the biggest thing that you feel every day is your body so you're actually giving yourself the biggest insecurity possible mm. that you will see in every mirror You'll see every, you'll see in every picture. You'll see that. So if you, I, we've all got insecurities about whatever. But if you end up putting it on your body, it's probably one of the worst things you can do. Yeah. And obviously, I was speaking to a few girls the other day, and I, I didn't actually realise because a few, I, eh? <laughs> <laughs> a few women, right? A few women, <laughs> fuck's sake. And uh, explaining what their relationships with their mums are like. Mm. So I swear I was about to go next to this, like, and it's fucking insane. Right. I was like, look, if there's any. Ladies that are listening, and your mum used to, he's call each other fat, and he's, oh, look at the bingo wings. Stop. Mm. Stop right now. Mm. You are destroying your mental health of you, the next generation, the next generation. You're setting up a, a negative outlook on just looks. Fucking looks, horrendous. Eh? I was like, see if my, like, I guys have a laugh with each other, but I don't actually think we go, I don't think we'd ever call each other, like, as you get older, 
But when you go, oh, you're fucking fat. I don't know, mate. <laughs> See, I my, know it's I, it's hard. I, I I just think there's two different. Like again, it could probably stem from our dads and that, from like the I, relationship with our parents. From, from what I was hearing, though, like and now uh, I've heard it for his girlfriends in the past. I'm like, why is your mum speaking to you like that? Mm. Why has she just said that to you? Yeah, I'm mean, that's fucking. It's no nice. And the thing, about, the saddest thing about our parents' generation is them growing up. They didn't have no the fortunate access to us health. I the even the personalities in the space who are really who are pushing a really good message. Yeah. And they had the news and it was Atkins diet and then Herbalife pops oh. up and then Slimming. So they get roped into that and that's where it's a bit of a shame because it's lose hard. Weight, lose weight, aye, lose weight, it's lose all about weight. the weight loss side aye, of things. Aye. Um I was gonna say so I uh, the what was I going what, what did you say there? Just Oh, the the relationship with your parents and mm-hmm. were guys different. So I think I was about to say yes, but then in my my group of friends, like Darn, like Darn was like he had an amazing transformation, like what he was able to do. He used to be like really overweight during high school, and then lost the weight, built a good bit of muscle, great physique and everything. And uh, <laughs> this is where you know who your close friends are and your just actual friends. So the good close friends is like I see Fat Dobbin back in the day. He was some <laughs> laugh. Fat Dobbin was the best Dobbin. <laughs> aye, so that aye, was aye. coming out in Prague. And, and, it, and I think there's a fine line because the, the culture today is, oh, you can't joke and you know like that. But that, it's good humour. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm fucking saying this publicly. I might be humiliating them even more. But I don't know. I think but that's that, not who it is now. It's not. Which but, is the main thing. I think that as well. But also I think it's having the right people around you as well is, is also important because if it's all fixated on weight loss and it's all fixated on looks, mm. then... You're seeing your friend, you're actually going, oh, my mate, my mate's in good shape. And he's like, aye, this, my fucking arms are too small, though. And I'm like, you're like, my, my fucking, uh, yeah, fucking yeah, look yeah, at my yeah. arms then. My arms must be too small. Uh, so yeah. it's a very dangerous game and the people that you place around you. So the last couple of days I was at this Growth Getters, the mastermind, and there was a lot of fitness people in there. And it hurt my soul, mate, every time they spoke about fitness. And a few guys in there who who's their avatar of people is getting them more muscular, getting them shredding. There's nothing wrong with that message. But, I feel there's a better message you can put be put out there, and you know that now is the fat PT is that somebody is that is that an actual person? He's in Oddington. Right, so so they were saying the point like how somebody like the fat PT is like nobody's gonna want to go to him because you want to go to something we've talked about like actual being in shape and kind of practicing what you preach you preach just like how you when you take a business advice for somebody who's working poor. in McDonald's for example not know that they're poor but it's like well they've they're not running their business so why would I take advice from that so we're going back and forth and he's like I want somebody who's shredded for use fitness guys in here and I think they pointed to me and he's like I like Dale like for example like you're gonna like they were talking about a product and how to set up your product and your email market and it's like you're out of shame you want to get in shape for your wedding I was like that's no you wouldn't be coming to me if that was you mm-hmm. I'd be saying I don't train you and I'm actually thinking of creating a video today well maybe not publish it today because Saturdays are crap for fucking reach Hush. I was thinking of creating a video today you go I do not get you in shape just to fucking get that message out there aye. but then on one hand I'm like well, well will that be a good reaction but then I'm going to talk about what I do aye, aye. and as a byproduct of some of these things that you're going to chase people like those workshops for example I just clicked on um, one of the one of the guys that's in the workshops and I said in his check and I goes we're not trying to lose weight here we're not even tried we're not even touched but all I've got you doing is no client lift comes weights, to me right? try, I say we're not losing weight aye let's chill just now like aye. I know that's your goal I know that's it. Well, most people's goal. goals, but let's take the. Well, all I've done is take the element of how he looks out of the equation and got him to focus on some other things. Yeah. And what's happened? Like we're nearly ten kilos down in twenty six days. Aye, aye. That is fucking insane. Aye. Right. And anyone listening, to it, like you'd be like, oh, how the fuck's he done that? So let's get into some strategies then. Aye, aye. Oh, I'd certainly say the first Sorry, I would. I went off in a tangent. Aye, 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 no, I just saying, like the relationship from parents. That's that's I know, where I I'd cut certainly you say right, right in that point, you were going to say there. I, I think one of the reasons why when I when we are saying to people though, and you're like, I, I fully I fully get what they're saying about going to a coach who's in shape. Yeah. Right. I, I think that's. I think as a coach, mm. you need to be leading by example. You don't need to be leading by what you're going to exactly teach your clients how to do mm. like I've just got a new client there and absolutely no even slightly how I would train mm. but at the same time she's going to be seeing me she's going to be seeing I'm consistently training I'm consistently uh, eating good I'm consistently working on my goals 
Do you know what I mean? That's how they see. Mm. And no matter what stage of the bit they're at, I'll be helping them. But they, they'll also be looking up to someone who like is, is walking the walk. But let's flip that then, right? Let's say your insecurities are coming out of you, right? And, you're, and right. You're, you're posting a video and you're like, and this is where I was caught. I was t- spoke about this, t- t- said this story so many times where I took a picture in the lead up to my wedding. I oh, shredded, yeah, 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 I and I was like, right, gonna get you, gonna get shredded now. Um, we bit. Fl- I can't even remember what I said, but it was along those lines. And she's like, right, yeah, actually, to me, looking in great shape. Like, right. and she, and I'm glad to this day. I'm still very thankful that I had that conversation with her. And I could say, well, like, just suck it up, and that. But that's the same as the trainer going, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a wee bit fat, and they're going. I actually think you look incredible. Aye, aye. That's that's I'm, I'm miles away from this, so I'm aye. just not. I'm just going to give up. Aye. And there's a guy, there's a guy at this event, right? Before we get into this, and he said, very vulnerable state. Had said like he was a big guy, right? And he was like, we we're asking questions at the end. He was asking about like, how do you run a business and kind of stay and, and make time for your health as well? And he was like, look, I, I'm zero to a hundred, and I, he says, I am I can. <laughs> I think he's good mates with Richards because Richards like I've seen you run an ultra marathon and then day five Big Mac, uh, day five uh, Burger Kings at the same time. So this was zero to hundred, zero to hundred, and um, there was some brilliant minds in there in terms of who was in the fitness space. Um, and Rob Westra's wife Louise, she does a lot of stuff when it comes to your biology and the chemical responses and all that sort of stuff that goes on. Mm. And she went into like all the detail of that and said that's because of the X, Y, and Z, and. And then I'm thinking, like, the last couple of days, he's probably been kind of sat back because they've said, oh, like, you need to be in the best shape. If you're in the best shape, blah, 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 blah. And I kind of turned around to him and I was like, why Why do you need to work out? Why do you need to do a, a, an ultra marathon? Like, we all think, I've said before, zero to 100. Why don't you go to two first? Why don't you try one workout a week? And then I kind of said, we, that's where we share the success stories, eh? like, your clients that you have, where it's like they've worked out one, two, three times a week on average and here's the results the uh, better relationships with their friends the food everything it I goes think. it goes beyond that so i it's a shame that and, th- and this is why i want to do this episode because we all have it but there's a the biggest shift in the fitness industry has to be it's not about getting shredded and it's not necessarily about peak performance but to get a wave of people who aren't working out getting them working out it's like right let's play to the benefits that you can actually get from and this then see what from one day aye because it's alright like us just now that's why I say like CrossFit probably aye like geez it Hydrox games aye like let's have a wee fun sp- fucking spur at it but I recognise as well I'm like I uh-huh. I actually hate bur- burpees that much. I'm not going to be doing. No, that. I wouldn't do it. I honestly couldn't think anymore. Do you not think we could do like a Hydrix double for no. the? No, I think it'd be so shite. <laughs> I, I, I actually no, it wouldn't actually be that shite. It'd be fun, but you'd be fucked, and you would need. I don't know. It would like take so much time at your week because mm. you're going to be fucked after that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, you're going to be Chris, destroyed. Christian and uh, his missus Ailey, they're going for placement. Are they? I, I think you're, they're going to win, yeah, yeah. and they're a couple. They are very high performing in terms of performance in the sense of high endurance high weight training strong individuals you've got and to love that though aye like the, the, but it's there's, very hard to love so that so here's the here's the last piece on this there's an obsession and a mindset with it right we know people who are they love training but training you've had you fall into this category sometimes that training can be a detriment to your health sometimes so when I was texting you you were like should I go to the gym and I was like if you're going to the gym fucking take it easy because I, I know you'll go into that gym I, I and you'll, <laughs> you'll I just done my workout <laughs> you blast it though you fucking you, as soon you, as that warm up pitch you're like I feel alright <laughs> well there's the dopamine I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like I actually feel okay there's the done but uh, yeah so so actual strategies then right. um, starting with the first one so mindset going into this is is, is something and your mindset, we've spoken about the people that you're surrounding yourself with. Yeah. Let's start with, before we actually go into the actual strategies of what you can do physically, let's talk about what you can do from a social media point of view. Unfollow any of these pages that you're comparing yourself to, right? So these sort of influencer type of things where it's all about, you're just seeing pictures, half naked pictures all year round because what you're not, what you're also not seeing is they've maybe taken a big batch of photos. I know hundreds of bodybuilders that do this. I need to- Post show. They do a photo shoot and like it looks like it's in ten different cities, so they've got a year's worth of content that but they continue to post, time. and they don't look like that all year round. And what a vulnerable state! Like it's it's almost like the photo shoot game for us. Aye, aye. for fitness you people. Go ask yourself, why do I follow this person? 
Like why? What's in from? Aye. Aye. Exactly. I get good information at them. Like, if the answer's yes, then there'll yeah. be some people's stories I watch and go, "Fuck man, I just quite enjoy their stories." Hmm. But then there's other people where you're like, "I f- need to unfollow them again." Like they're not giving me any value, and that's all right. Do you know what I mean? Like so people might unfollow us and go, "They're not actually giving me any value," and that's cool. Like we don't, we, we won't give value to every single person. Yeah. But you got to look and you got to go. Why am I following this big juicy booty girl? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And there's a lot of guys that you're wasting so much of your time. So much of your time. I, I barely follow any of that. Like, I look at sometimes and I go, unfollow. Why the fuck am I following you? Who do you follow? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't name them by name. The only big juicy booty I follow is Gillian Hamilton. Gossip, right? <laughs> it's the only one. <laughs> it's something that I actually, it was a few years ago I went, no, but delete them all. Yeah. There's fucking no point following anybody like that. Your fucking feed is full of that shit. Yeah, but Fuck, man. I think that's maybe taking a wee bit of a right turn. That's getting none today with your body this month. Absolutely. That was, that's probably a, no, a, but, no, but a, a girl will follow them for the same. Like, a, oh, no, I get that. Like, from a like, girl's point of view. Man, yeah. I want to fucking look at them. Right, what workout do they do? Boom. And they're giving you absolutely shite workouts. And we've got the same, for a guy's perspective, these mm-hmm. fucking big juicy bodybuilders doing these shite ass <laughs> workouts. And you're like, but there's guys out there following them, going into the gym, replicating that, and going, why do I not? Um, mm-hmm. And there's girls going replicating their shitty workouts and going, why do I not? Uh, and then there's a discount code for a supplement, and they're like, <laughs> it's because I'm not taking the supplement, right? It's because of that. It's exactly because of that. But it's also why steroid juice is, is probably at its highest I, point ever now, I, I especially from a guy perspective. Yeah, it is. And I, I don't know what you could have said to convince me otherwise when I was younger. I honestly don't. I just know that. I, I, I don't, I honestly, I'm at the point where I actually don't know if you could. Ah, you were just gone. Yeah. That's what I was actually speaking about with, I, I don't, don't like to say names just in case they don't want to hang me, but they were like, these girls don't understand that these girls with massive asses in the gym are sometimes t- t- no, take no, steroids no. as well. Good. And you a lot of mean? them said like operations for Aye. like fillers and all that sort they've of stuff. They've had the fillers up the top, they've got the fake boobs mm. and they're taking steroids. And, and that's probably what, let's preface this with one thing, like there's an element of therapy that, that does play its part in this and there's also an element for girls listening to this you get you, you girls have it much much harder than than us guys to an extent because there's there's a whole tier to this when it so it's not just about looks it's the dress fit it's aye. the dress size it's the makeup it's aye, the aye, aye. it's the aye, aye. so there's there's a lot of that that probably it's hard for me to even try and compliment i to to what you can do but some of these strategies will help with that for sure because i i know a lot of a lot of clients that I've trained in the past and and still train, where as we get stronger and as we do some of these other things, they start to they start to change the relationship with themselves because it's not just fixated on, oh, I need to I need to I need to look a certain way. Aye. Like this is a byproduct, but of all these great things that I'm doing, I look good. Yeah, okay. Like there's nothing wrong with putting makeup and all that on. It's the it is the culture after all. I actually had a conversation with a client. And I actually forgot to bring it up, or I maybe did. Can't remember, but she was like. I went up a dress size because her legs have got bigger. Mm. And she was like, I tell my sister, and my sister was like, oh, you're yeah. not feeling, you know, feeling shite. And she was like, no, I'm fucking, I'm getting not, stronger. Aye, so weighting the scales, dress size, pictures and uh, uh, of how you look, these kind of all feed into that. That's a mindset that flip. Mindset. She's like, I've gained a dress size because I've got bigger legs. Yes! Yes! Mm. She's not tried to gain it. She wasn't trying to gain. Mm. She just went, I don't fit in the smaller size. Mm. I need to get a bigger size. I'm getting bigger. Aye. And she's like, fucking yes. Whereas, most other people are like, fuck, I have fucked it. Aye, because it's, it's, it's not... lose weight, get doing a dress size. Do you know what I mean? That's the biggest things that yeah. are pushed and are still pushed to this day. So removing people from your social media, like like James said, think of the value that you're getting from them. If there's zero value there and it's just to look at them because they look pretty, come on. Yeah, there's websites for that. <laughs> <laughs> that actually is. Right, so the actual first kind of point where I would go down is when it comes, if you're listening to this, there's, there'll be elements of workouts in your life and workouts understanding a very similar thing to social media, like what is the purpose of what you're doing? So if you're doing spin classes, you're doing um, boot camps, you're doing um, CrossFit, whatever it is, like under that branch, like why is it you're doing there? Does it fall into category of it's when you catch up your friends and it's a community aspect? Mm-hmm. Or does it fall into category it's for some other ulterior motive of losing weight, losing, like you said, Aye. if it's anything around losing weight, looking better in a mirror, mirror or what was the other one you said? Uh, dress sizes, like it's, it's all about the aesthetics. You need to probably move away from that form of training and try something else for this period of time. 
And I would say a minimum of three months, try it and watch what happens to your relationship with things. So obviously, Addy Powerlifting, squat bench dead. And for the, for the last eight weeks, I've followed my first full powerlifting program. It's gone fantastic. I walked in the day to the gym. Not like what you train the day. I'm like, bench. I'm like, I, what, what, what after that? I'm like, I've got three exercises of bench and then I've got some uh, cable hangways and some uh, stuff for the triceps, but it's a bench day. Everything after the normal bench set is to get my bench better. They're like, what? You know, so you, why do you not just say chest? I'm like, because I'm not training my chest. I'm not trying to get my chest. <laughs> training the movement. I'm, not, I'm training the movement because I want, I'm, I'm, I thought I turned off there. No, no, no. We're and the good. aim is to get stronger. That's the only aim. My tits will get bigger. My shoulders will get bigger and my triceps will get bigger by doing this. Mm. But the focus is just to get stronger on the bench. They couldn't comprehend it. Yeah. Like, I don't Look at that, it sounds a wee bit boring. Like when you think about it, it's like, what's he doing? He's just doing 10 sets of bench. <laughs> but that's all it is. But it does sound boring until you see the result. Yeah, and I think there's, there's levels to this as well. So Aye. if you're someone who is consistently working out with weights and your weights element is all around the... Aesthetic purposes, you got a bodybuilding split because you want to grow your legs because you want your legs to look good. See, by taking the shift away from the uh, the aesthetic purpose and focus on the strength, right. the powerlifting movement, it doesn't need to be powerlifting, doesn't but just strength. In fact, there's a free program in our bio. Follow that, right? That can be, and this isn't just for beginners, but if you get strong at those movements that we've put in there over the course of the next 30, 60, 90 days, your aesthetics will change. Will change. Right. And it will change without you trying. There'll be a there'll be a food element to this as well. But do you see getting stronger at a movement? That confidence carries over into everyday life. There's Aye. a there's almost like you start walking with your chest up higher, you're like, I am better <laughs> you than anyone else. You do. <laughs> see, like what I like to I, I, don't, I don't know if it's the message I'm trying I'm not trying to push the message. But when people say I have oh your arms are looking good, good, I don't train biceps, <laughs> right? So take that as you will. I do not train biceps and I get compliments on my arms, mm. right? I, what else was I going to say there? I, I don't really hit back as such. I don't really hit chest as such, but people go, well, your back's looking really good. And I'll go, oh, your quads are looking really good. And I'm like, I only strength train. Mm. The only purpose of my training right now is to get stronger. And, and, and I'm getting compliments on all these other right, things. So let's, let's actually talk about that because that's where it can get a bit misconstrued as to why you have body dysmorphia in the first place. Aye. So back to me in high school, they always get abs. What do I do? I only fucking train abs. Mm -hmm. No happens when I don't get compliments from abs anymore. I think I'm no good enough, right? Aye. So your focus is all around strength just now. Aye. It's about getting stronger in those movements. You get compliments on your physique as a byproduct, but you don't take that, you don't let that mess with your mindset. You're like, oh, thanks very much. Keep going. I'm going to keep focusing on my strength. Keep doing and that's where the, the, there is a disconnect because you're like, yeah, there's a there's a confident aspect of that, mm -hmm. regardless of not being the biggest, the most shredded or whatever it is, but you're confident in your own skin. Aye. And that confidence is unrivaled with any anyone else because that confidence carries over into conversations, it carries over into the workplace, it carries over into relationships, everything. And that's what's going to kind of level up your mindset, but also level up your healthy outlook or lifestyle. Yeah. So but it's about being happy and you your skin mm. do you know what i mean i don't think there's anything worse than going oh my arms aren't looking that good mm. or my shoulders aren't looking that good or my chest isn't looking that good like what the fuck man mm. i just think that's a whole i remember being that guy oh my chest isn't big enough mm. like what a horrible way to think about yourself and I, i've caught myself in times as well and you're like ah i'm not gonna take my top off i'm not gonna do <laughs> i'm not gonna do that and it's like who cares Aye. like that that as well and you think a lot of people care but they really don't like go on holiday and look who is like peeled to the bone on holiday there's very few Fucking no kind of Aye, there's, there's, there's very few at that it's, it's a very minority part and nobody's really looking about now when you see those people yeah they stand out you're like man look at size that guy Aye. oh man she looks she looks incredible and you can you can get to that part but you can get to that in your own way. Aye. You're seeing that person, you're like, I need to look like that, but you need to look like your own version yeah. of that. And if you do these steps, you will look like that. That's Aye. the that's the thing with it. So squat bench and deadlift, it doesn't have to be just necessarily those three movements. They're definitely a good starter, but compound movements in general, yeah. just focus on learning them first, right? The whole technique of learning a compound movement, getting a full ass to grass squat, uh, overhead press. Yep. Have you got overhead press in your powerlift program? Because I realised no. that... You do? Aye, just this, it, this block, aye, this six-week block. Because that's not an actual... No, it's not a lift. I wonder why. What? wonder why. I don't know. 
Because I would say that's a, but then again, it's like, why is walking lunges power, knowing powerlifting? Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> like, it's great at it. They're fantastic exercises and stuff. Like. I think because the bench press hits the shoulders. I guess so. Do you know what I mean? Is it not an upright row? <laughs> 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 so, compound movements, learn them, figure out. Like, I would maybe start with five or start with the, the free plan that we've got. They're all kind of dumbbell orientated. Focus on getting stronger at the, like, that's how you learn those movements first. And then you see something that's going to come out in, in a month or so's time. The, what we're going to do is an advanced part to that with its barbell stuff. Aye. And then kind of building out a proper program from there. Yeah. So, you got the movements down. It's time to get strong. It's time to look at and look and track those numbers. Yeah. And week on week, it's like, okay, I know my form's great. Let's focus on strength. Do that for three months. And and bear in mind, through this whole process, you're not weighing yourself. You're not, you're not doing anything that it focuses on the look side of things. And you're just going to naturally go, you may walk, I know we've got the mirrors in here as, as a point, but you're going to walk by a mirror one day and you go, I know. Oh, my, my shape's changed. Aye, How's my aye. shape changed? I'm not, I'm not really, not really tried to change my shape. And this is where the stress element plays a big part. So if you're stressed every day, taking that picture, going, oh fuck, oh, fuck. <sighs> see these, see these average bodybuilders. I would say average in the sense that they'll never go pro, right? It's just the social media strategies. Usually but coaches they that do it. Pictures. They take pictures every day and they're like holding a wee bit of water here, saying, "You don't even see that, mate. Shut up, right? <laughs> You're just putting this. It's like a copy and paste caption they do. It's like, what did Seabum post three weeks out for his show? Uh, All yeah, right, yeah. copy there. We bit flat this morning, <laughs> mate. Ripped. Aye, ripped. Fourteen inch arms. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but that that side of things as well. Like if you're not constantly over analysing, you do get to step back and there's a there's a almost like a wee bit of less stress around it. Mm-hmm. So next thing is paying attention to other things. Then so that kind of leads nicely into that. So with some other things that you would say for someone to focus on that isn't the scale weight, it isn't measurements, it isn't pictures. What would what would be some things you still? They're really ships in a life. Yeah, it's quite complex, though. So. I know it's complex, but stop thinking about just that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? How is everything else in my life? Do I have good relationships with everybody? Like, if you've got kids, do you, are you good with the kids? Mm. See, you start thinking about that, you go, fuck, guy, I'm fucking... Me, me and the kids are great. I don't mean that, just that, but there's loads of other things that yeah. you, can, you can look into. So, obviously, we spoke about strength in that, but it's like, are you waking up and you feeling good? Do you know what I mean? Are you focusing on your sleep and is your sleep being good? Do you know what I mean? That's another thing to look at. And when your sleep starts getting good, you start looking good. Yeah. And you don't even need to look any different. Uh, they're, the, they're the big components. And it's like, track your water intake. Aye. Increase your water. Like, put the put the tracking element and the progression element. We are speaking this in previous episodes. Yeah, like, put them into other things. Like, okay, well, I'm, I'm having one litre of water, let me have a litre and a half, let right. me have two litres, and then, and then start, you start going, feeling better anyway. Aye, my energy's good. Aye. And you're like, I'm losing weight here, what the hell? Like, aye, aye. But you shouldn't know you're losing weight because you shouldn't be tracking your foot, uh, tracking your uh, uh, weight. But you're you're putting everything to one side and you're going, right, if I'm normally stepping the scales every day, that's probably part of the problem because aye. that weight is a fix. You tie weight to looks and that's aye. two different things in itself. That's a whole fucking topic in its own, but putting all them to the side, energy is a very good feedback of, right, how how is things? And we spoke about biofeedback and tracking that and the kind of, um, zero to ten, but I've changed that to. to I said this, but I think I have I know, yeah. red, amber, green because it's just that, yeah. an easier way to track aye, aye. and just kind of do that throughout your day and see if things changes. And because you're tracking that, you go, "Why was that so red?" Oh, I, I was you on. Start thinking about. I, your day. I was watching. Um, what I was on my phone to TikTok to half eleven at I night. Three times. <laughs> I, I was trying to beat the record to sixty-five the times. Pop. <laughs> so you start pe- you piece together all these different things of other things that's affecting your your lifestyle or affecting your your health and fitness and then from there you you, before you know it that three months is over and you get three months of data and it's not about weight loss anymore it's not about aestheticness but you get you're armed with more information to go right i know what's i know where i can start changing my food changing my diet changing my whatever it is and then you're waking up and you're going right thinking about food thinking about training thinking about food thinking about Food training, <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, right, thinking about work, yeah. And you've not even thought about how you look in the mirror, and you're just so focused because you're feeling good, mm-hmm. and you're like, fuck, man, I feel great. Right. So, I oh, sorry, no, no, go on, go on. I was gonna say the other thing in there before we move on is steps, right? This is where I was thinking the other day, very much like the scales and why people are training is because they're the goal is to lose weight, right? 
And if it's so fixated and you're not getting anywhere with your weight loss and you have this bad body dysmorphia, going through this three-month block of you're not focusing on steps anymore, you're focusing on time outside, right? Uh, yeah. And just disconnect, you're not getting the steps in, you're not getting outside to lose weight, you're doing it to, to get this mental clarity on and get reap the rewards from some of these other things. Night. So I find if I sit in the house too long, I just start overthinking about shit. So I was like, yesterday, I put up my story, steps to end the day. I don't know how many steps I've done. I just went, I'm going to go my usual tw 20 minute walk. Not a long walk. It's outside in the fresh air. I'm just listening to music. And again, you just feel so much better. Mm. I never went, I'm going to go get my 4K steps at the end of the day. No thinking like that. I'm like, I'm just going to get outside, get some fresh air. When I come back, I know I feel better. Bang. I wasn't feeling bad. I was like, I just know I feel even better. <laughs> and I did. And so I think, like, um, if you're if you're not a runner, right? I uh, do think running's fucking actually a lot better for my mental for mental health than I ever would have thought. And I don't run fast, but going to walk by the end of the walk, you're no thinking about everything the same. You're like, so if you're thinking, oh, how do I get my calories, and my protein, and my training in? Am, am I going to do well? I don't feel I look good. It's go, just all these different stresses you process it. Go a wee walk mm -hmm. for half an hour and see if you feel the same. But yeah. Do you no, know that's mean? that's a good strategy, and uh, it's just disconnecting with the number because the number's stressing you out because you're not hitting the numbers. Yeah. Like right, right, let's change this to time, right? Aye. And, then, and there's an element of a number there, but it's the it's the purpose of getting outside. You want to come back ten minutes early, do it. Aye. Right. So next one, get rid of mirrors. Just Aye. take them all down. <laughs> Anytime you see a mirror, look away. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, can I look at myself? It's got, this is this is tricky to do, but very judgmental. You can be very judgmental of yourself every time you get up in the morning. I have mirrors all over my house. I've got these mirrored wardrobes. Every time I buy, I'm like, oh, I'm getting the poses and all that sort of stuff in. But very hard to disconnect from that. And there's probably one benefit having this gym where there's no mirrors in it. Yeah. There's that one we want. If there's a good mirror out right there, which I've not been in ages, but the there's no mirrors in there. And that's, that's easy for me to say. It's hard for you to do when you're training in the gym. But try and maybe train at the rig instead of training at the the squat rack with I, the mirror well, in that's it. That's what I train anyway. Mm. And... Uh, I, I I never use mirrors for any of my lifts, like anyway. No, for the lifts, but no, I just but mean I you're judging see, yourself when you squat down. You're like, oh, because, look at my because, thighs. But. Aye, because I'm no doing it for any lifts, I'm never really looking at myself that much. Mm. There's a very odd occasion where I catch myself in the mirror, mm. and even then, it's that busy that I'm not going to fucking be staring at myself in the mirror. Yeah. So, luckily, in a really busy gym, if you're sitting staring at yourself in the mirror, uh, <laughs> you see them. Oh, well. <laughs> no, and, judge. No, so, judge. So, the. the the one that's very strongly correlated with this is taking pictures. Like you're probably used to like taking these progress pictures. And this is why I'm not a fan of weekly progress pictures or even daily progress pictures. Daily progress pictures. I've seen like some coaches like let's see it, let's see the changes. And I think I think the mindset strategy with the coaches doing that is because they're always seeing it, so they're more likely going to go, right, right. It's like if you say the weight and the skills, you're like, right, okay, I need to stick to my food today, I need but to me, there's there's a very small percentage of people that's going to work for. There's a majority percent of people that's not going to work with that. There'll so, be a strategy for someone that that works for. When I was signing up a client last, I was like, it was actually last night. I was like, look, you take progress photos. I was like, I'm not going to lie, I'm not be looking at them. Like they're for you. <laughs> that's a bit creepy. That <laughs> no. getting on. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, I'm not going to be looking at them. Like mm. I, I do not. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't bother me how your progress changes in a photo. I say, is if at any time you're like. I'm really happy with my progress photos. I'll go and look then. Mm. And uh, but I say for you, minimum every four, no maximum every. I'm thinking about the right word here. Don't date any less than four weeks. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Get right? me now. And he was like, I don't really think I would see any progress until like twelve. I'm like, you're absolutely right, mate. But I said, I think you probably would see slight differences in four weeks. But if you don't feel you want to date, don't date. Right. But what I did, what I did say is, look, for week one to week twelve, absolutely date. Date mm. for yourself though. Don't date for me. I said, I'm not, if you want me to look at it, then I'll look at it and go, mm. well done. But I, I'm, it's like a really hard message to put across because I know how I've been with progress photos. And I think there needs to be a time where, like, if somebody asks me, should I take a progress photo? And I'll go be like, no. Mm. Like, no. Well, think about it. this person, this client comes to you and they're like, I'm, I really hate my body image. Aye. I've got body dysmorphia. You're like, right, okay. No progress photos. None at all. None, None at all. Now, you probably want to take one to start with. I take one. That, that one one and if you can like some of my clients haven't taken them in six months seven months Aye. but see that day where they go like oh, I don't feel like I'm I feel like this is pointless so like right let's maybe update where we're at yep. right same with your weight let's update where we're at and it's like holy shit 
my weight's not changed, but look at that. Or we've updated some measurements. So it's not that these are bad tracking tools, it's just they're very obsessive. And if you're the obsessive type, take them, put them to the side. Let's just put, it depends I, what kind of person you are. Ah, when, gonna, especially when it comes to that. Yeah. So scrap the progress pictures because it's not as if you're you're going to decline or regress by focusing on strength and compound movements, for example. That's a, this is the next one. I think we'll stick with pictures now. Yeah. Con controversial. This is controversial. You've done it. I've done it. Every guy's done it. Every girl's done it. If you struggle with body dysmorphia, taking pictures while you have a pump. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is the best, best feeling in the world. <laughs> it's the best feeling in the world at the time. But then the pump leaves. Mm. And people see you in person. And they're like, that's not you. And you're like, oh, I had a pump. I had a pump. Right. Cool. Like, but Sounds like Arnold there. I know, but like, you don't have a pump now. Mm. And then you're like, what? Well, we've all done it, especially as guys. I'm going to get a pump before my night out. Because mm -hmm. you're used to taking pictures with a pump. And the ironic thing is, it's like, but you don't even make the taxi and it's away. It, it dies. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> but it's like, you're like, right, I'm going to go looking like I've got a pump. And as good as a pump feels, and as good as taking a picture with a pump feels, if you've got body dysmorphia, it's going to make it worse. The plane into it. It's going to make it worse. Mm -hmm. You're only taking pictures of yourself when you do not look that great. I took a picture of myself in my back room the other day. Shit, like, and I was like, that's quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I thought you'd look that. But it was like the complete opposite way because the lighting was that bad. All right. Now you can see airing. And I was like, <laughs> I might post this one time and just show people, like, look, you might take a picture in this lighting and no realise that you don't actually look as bad as you think mm. lighting is such a big king but aye if you're taking pictures in great lighting wear a pump because all these gyms like they've got bits in the changing room mm. where everybody knows where the lighting's good so you're taking these pictures you're posting them or you're just continuously looking at them and you're going I look fucking great mm. but then you go look in the mirror when you hear me you go I don't, I don't want you to look like that there but then let's flip this right so, uh, it can be flipped absolutely no I mean from a from a perspective of coaches and that sort of stuff what message are you putting out there by enhancing that this is i fucking hate photo shoots right i don't like them i don't like them. i think there's places for them but at the same time i also think why do we need to train to it's different it's all to do with the process going into the photo shoot for me because if the process going into the photo shoot is like right we're gonna do a photo shoot in 12 months and we're going to get you eating more food gonna get you stronger and let's see like we'll get you Cut, we'll, we'll work on your body image and we'll take pictures of your body image with that sort of stuff because nothing wrong with like looking good in your wedding day looking good on a an event trying to look good for 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 something it's just the methods that goes into that and most people when it comes to a photo shoot they get they cut so many corners to get so lean and they'll never look like that again well they'll never look like that for the next photo until the next photo shoot that they do aye, aye. and then what is the pictures that's plastered up on the profile picture and that and it's like right okay and then you right. see them in person. Yeah, no, but uh, but then there's also the subconscious thing in that person's mind. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to wear like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to show off as much because I don't look like my photo shoot picture. Ah, yeah. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't look like. There's nothing wrong with getting exactly shredded what for it. Bodybuilders, would they start wearing? Aye, big baggy big, stuff. Aye. Baggy stuff because, because they know for a fact that that's not what they look like right aye, now. And Even it, if they look amazing right now, they know they don't look like that picture. Yeah, and it's I really don't know how to communicate this. I, I don't. I, I struggle with it. Because I think photo shoots are great because it's like, it's an achievement of what it's been done. But it, like I said, it's that process where people get so, like, I've seen some coaches do it pretty well where they get a bunch of clients in and they have like a photo shoot day. It doesn't matter which shape they're in. Aye. It's all different body sizes and they're celebrating like, we're all different. We but here, And then there's a story behind it. It's like, aye, aye. she reverse type 2 diabetes. She fucking, I've seen that. I, like, and there's a good message behind it. But then the mate, when you think of photo shoots, you automatically think people getting shredded and then you see them and it's in wee skimpy fucking underwear and Here's even guys shoot. and that. I just don't understand. I don't understand. It's like, even people get so shredded, they look unhealthy. As well, Aye. like it's no. Here's my issue: if you're natural and you get your slimmest shredded, you're a lot smaller in person than what that photo will make you look. Mm. You you see these natural people and you're like, he's not that big, right? So that's number one. You're not that big in person, and everybody knows it, and you know everybody knows it, right? Two, these photo shoots, you're getting tanned and oiled up, <laughs> right? Why? Not. Right? Are you tanned and oiled up in every day in life? No. Some people are. <laughs> so, yeah, that's very true. No, but you're getting extra tanned and extra oiled up. So you get, you can see all the creases. Do you look at that every day in life? No. Yeah. Right? You get these HD shots. 
if they're untouched, they're enhanced. Perfect. They're always enhanced. Perfect. We filter. Right. If you got, so that's what I was thinking when I was thinking about getting my photo shoot. I'm gonna go how I look. Don't put any on me. I don't want fuck all on me. I'll go exactly how I look. Take a picture and you don't edit it. I don't want any edits. I only want a really good quality photo of myself. Mm. That's all I want because that's the kind of message I was trying to push. If you've got to get a picture took, and I say to my niece as well, why are you putting a fo- filter on your photo? And she's 12, but it's, it's the same message. It doesn't matter if you're 12, 22, 32, 42, 52. By putting a filter on yourself, you are displaying yourself with someone you are not. Mm. But you know you're not that person. And I think that's where photo shoots are severely detrimental to the individual's mental health. Just their body image. Their I body mean, image forever. Because they, they'll get all these pictures back and they go, fuck, I look fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. As you say, two weeks later, a month that's later, gone. it's gone. Now, where it doesn't go is it's the pro- the process of getting into that photo shoot. Aye. And if they're not tanned up and they're not all that, the, the, the girls will do their makeup, guys might do their hair, Aye. all that sort of stuff. Like, if it's like the raw f- footage of that, like after, it's like, yeah, like that, there's a, there's a snapshot of me. But that's why... Depends how empty that is. I don't know. It's, it's hard because... I've not took a selfless, a, a selfless, a self, a selfie with my top off in ages until I've done that video, and also I'm no in the best condition in in the sense that how shreddy I am. You've just said that though. But no, but exactly, fine. no. That's what I'm saying. Like in the video, I was like, but this, I feel good. I'm, I'm strong. Like, that's that, that's I, but in my head, there was wee, there's still wee glimpses of that, and I'm like, well, that's still there. Aye. And I'm, I feel I've got a good, good response in it. Aye. And you need to think how many people, like, we all want to look good because it, com- it's something, it mainly comes down to attracting their sex looking good naked, right? Most people want to look good naked. And if you're the person that's like, oh, turn the lights off, <laughs> then it, as much as I'm joking about, there'll be so many people that fall into that category and it's, it's sad. And that's not going to be fixed by training to look good, right? Oh. But you train to start focusing on these other measures, get healthier, eh, not get healthier, get stronger, get good at compound movements. As things start taking a play, it might take you five years. Mm-hmm might take you two might take you six months yeah. but you you follow that time and it, it's going to happen Aye. it's going to happen it's a much healthier balance you're not going to just start doing this in three months you're like all right yes Aye. they fucking they guys are right you gotta do that and go I what look, the fuck were they talking i about? feel like i look amazing already <laughs> but, but the, i'll be honest i was thinking the way here i was like six months into my training i was maybe just still under 11 stone i, I can't really fully remember right but i remember feeling like i looked fucking amazing I'm like two and a half freestone heavier than I was then and I still feel the same mm. and it's because my philosopher for training, my philosopher for nutrition is the same. Do you know what I mean? Do you think we can ever do a transformation photo though? What do you mean? Like with the message that we're trying to put out. So you've got a, we felt great in that picture. I guess it's a story that goes behind the it. The story it? needs to be right, aye. Because you could easily go, look out, I have fucking training with shite, diet with shite in this p- picture and then here's me, four stone heavier, looking stronger, power, like blah, blah, blah. You can, you can always spur up the message. So, you could be one of these stupid trainers that just makes a false message up from what's been said. <laughs> <laughs> so what I said to my client the other day, I was like, can we get a testimonial and we'll sit down and we'll have an interview? And she was like, nah, I don't really want to do that. I was like, cool. And I was like, you know what I was thinking about it? I was like, I, I can understand why that would be him. And then I was like, right, the confidence aspect, I said, look, I don't know if she's got it, by the way. I don't know. She, she'll probably be listening. Don't know if she's Fucking got it. Fucking do it, right? But what I said to her, I said, is this? Look, what I want chair. you to do, sit with your phone down the house, explain where you've came from and explain how good you feel right now and explain where you're going to go. You don't need to send it to me, but do it for yourself. Because mm. that confidence, you go, right, I have it. Because you don't talk about it to yourself. And then instead of going... I look like this and I've lost this weight and I've done this. You go, you actually unlock, oh, I feel like this, I feel like this, it's I want to as, feel like this. It's the same as the photo shoot, isn't it? Because people look at the pictures and go, right, I need to keep that look, that's yeah. the image. And that's why I, I like the testimony I've done with Christina. Cause I, she'll, no, I love that. Because she'll be like, you know what? That's who I am. That's, that's who I, I need to keep that's being. That's what I do every single client. Aye. Every single one. Once they get to a certain point, I go, right, we're doing that. And I want to. This for you. Aye. This is for you. We're putting on record. Like, what is it you want for for your future? Exactly. So I think every client that comes, I'll be like, we'll see you at the end after six months. If you stay with for six months, we'll do this. No, for the fact any other reason. This is when you unlock your real confidence. Mm. This is when you change as a person. Well, most people are fucking shit fear to speaking to the camera. Shit fear to speaking. Oh, I hate my scary voice. Me. I remember that like, you're like fucking. You're like. 
Is that what I look like? Because <laughs> your face is warped a different way. Is that have you seen that before? Aye, aye, aye. That baffles my mind. But you go. see me aye, aye. with that warped face, aye, and when aye, I aye. see it, I'm like, oh, who why is, is that? Why is my nose is like, like my, my hair is going another way? You're like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> right, the last point to finish on here. What does your body do for you? I think this is a fantastic point oh, Katie brought up. Fantastic, fucking um, amazing. And it, it is it's so powerful in the sense of your body is much more than how it looks. Aye. It's what does it what does it do for you? It functions, it gets you up, it gets you to see these amazing places. You said something about the guy in the wheelchair and he's like, This liberates me. Aye. This this and this this goes back to the mindset. So all to everything we do ties back into that mentality that you look at and you can be the victim in the situation and you can be you can be the owner in the situation. And as an owner you can go, you know what? Yeah, you know what? Some choices in life have led me to maybe getting out of shape or being overweight or whatever it is, but own it, right? It doesn't make you fat. It doesn't make you um, the that person. That's not your identity. You can you can easily dip in and out of that, but knowing like the triggers and focusing on these other things, you're unlikely to associate yourself with the aesthetic looks. Yeah. So that guy in the wheelchair, like people will be looking, oh, that's a shame. He's like, no, this is this is amazing. I can get about. I can still see things. And then there's a guy, Nick. Um, did I say about this when you brought us Nick Santos? He was born with no legs. Ah, yeah, I've seen. He's born that. with one arm, and he was—he's not even born with a whole hand, mate. It's like just after his elbow, and ah, he's yeah, got yeah, like I've seen him. three fingers. Kicks he's done stage. bodybuilding shows. He's done basketball games. He's snowboards. He's managed to drive a car. He's fucking innovated his whole life, and he's—he was saying that like he's my mum and dad were never like, um, never had. Uh, too much sympathy for me everyone always has sympathy for me but that allowed me to go you know what i can do anything yeah nothing can stop me yeah those things that you, he's like if i go oh i can i can never ride a bike and all that sort of stuff then that's me closing my mindset but if i open up it's like how can i ride a bike he'll find a way to do it Aye. and that's it's almost fucking one end of the extreme there but that's almost the, the flip that you need to have with right how can how can i how can I change the the way that I feel about myself? Aye. So okay, like okay, everyone's different shapes and sizes, and this is where I like the body positivity movement because you're right. You, the more people you see, I guess in that space, it's not accepting to stay where you are, but you're like okay, like there's normal people out Fine. there. Because cool. if it's all semi and panda shreds all over the place, you're like, man, I'm not that big guy, man. Aye. Like and, and people are, oh, that's dead sexy, that's attractive. And you're like, you go like into a wee turtle shell because you're aye. like, fuck, man. But you're you you need to. There has to be a balanced approach ultimately. Aye, aye. what was I going to say? So, so I had a conversation with a client no long ago. It was quite an emotional conversation. You'll know who it is. I don't really want to go into her backstory, but many many health skills. And uh, it was trying to change our mindset one day. And I was like, look, see, when you first came to me, I didn't feel sorry for you. Because <laughs> she was like, I don't want people feeling sorry for me. I was like, do you think I felt sorry for you? I said, no. I says, I was like, let's fucking get it. Let's fucking change your life. Mm -hmm. But I didn't feel sorry for you. I, I would have felt sorry for you if you didn't put in any effort. But like, oh, fuck, man. Like, no, it's not that. You, it's feeling sorry and being empathetic. So I, like, I, I, I hear I, everything you're saying, but I'm here to help. Let's I, go. I, 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 yeah. I, and I know that we can change this, mm -hmm. but I didn't feel sorry for you. I, did, I went, right. She's had a hard time, but she can change it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, honestly, I said that to her. I was like, I didn't feel sorry for you. But I knew you were going to change it. I could see it in your eyes. But there was no, I didn't have any sympathy for what, Like, I was like, she's had a hard life. But mm -hmm. honestly, and I, I and I meant when I said that, I was mm -hmm. like, I they genuinely didn't feel sorry for you. But I was like, I wanted to help you get to where, and we'll go there. And that's because I didn't feel sorry for you. And I said, nobody else will feel quote unquote sorry for you. They'll go, fuck man, she is fucking killed it because yeah. you realise that you need your body for this and this and this and this and your body is no just I've got a bit of fat on me it's used for so many different things and she, when she was like I fucking damn right it is it's a resilience damn fucking built. right it is but her, yeah. she, her body she can do so many other things like look after her grandchild that, that mm -hmm. she couldn't do before do you know and what that, I mean that's always a powerful one that you say back to but it's mothers and true. grands and that sort of stuff you say imagine you sitting in the mirror and calling yourself fat and everything right you're fat peg what all the all this fucking abuse under the sun yeah and then your daughter your granddaughter your whatever it is walks into the room and they're like they start talking to themselves that way that's almost because of it's a byproduct of the way that you speak because we learn yeah. from our parents yeah it's back to that conversation about the our, our parents generation they didn't necessarily know any better no we do and we need to we need if it's going to get better we need to change it aye, aye. So, like, what one of the biggest things I would say in the last year that I've realised is 
for me, and that's how it even more goes away for the bodybuilding mindset is had, I wouldn't say a shite upbringing, but no fantastic. And I've realised a lot, especially in the last five months, I was like, whoa, man, like, I've no doubt wait a wee bit. But I was like, I want 100% want kids one day. I want to meet someone who is good. Do you know what I mean? Who is fucking good morals. Is just a overall good person. Hmm. I say, how can I be that person? It's no by being the most shredded, sexy cunt on the planet. That's no me. it. <laughs> but that's no uh, it. So hmm. you got to ask yourself, what do you want and everybody else run about you? Do you want everybody else run about you to be sexy, looking good, and that's all they care about? Or do you want them to be strong, kind, compassionate? Yeah. People you can actually have genuine conversations with? Because that's no people who take the gym like that. Do you know what I mean? That's no. Well, that's why that's why like it starts with the mindset because everyone thinks their life's going to change when they're shredded and that. Oh. And yeah, okay, there's more compliments, right? Yeah, there's a wee bit more kind of status with it, but you can get that as well as you can get that by focusing on strength, focusing on these compound movements, and ultimately you'll if you're standing toe to toe with two versions of your life, one was just focused on looks and one was focused on those other things. Mm. That person and other things has a much healthier outlook because they're not dub- they're not checking and fixing their hair every two seconds and all like oh like oh, look at it state me, look at it state me, and you probably never truly get over it. Um, the, you probably if you depending on where you are like should go to therapy to deal with some of the things where it comes from they'll go into other areas I of your life that needs aye, to go. absolutely it's, it's almost a hype talk there now never went to it I mean I'm gone Wednesday uh, are you Wednesday you're gone Wednesday's my first we'll talk session. about that in the next episode aye we'll talk about that um, there's one thing I want to get into and it's for the guys well for the women too but it's more a, like it's only coming from my experience cut out porn that has been my biggest change in my confidence mm. and the way I don't look at myself. I would say for me, like you are a married man, it's not really a big thing in your life, been single quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you get your day good and like, fuck that, fuck it, I'm bored. You know what I mean? I'm like... So you, you think this? I think it's so fucking detrimental to a man's brain. You think so? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, 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 think it's a bigger epidemic this, than we, I think it's a bigger epidemic yeah. than we think. So there's a... There's a woman called Sex with Emily. Her stuff's great on this sort of stuff. And it's mm-hmm. about the the obesity, obesity epidemic is one thing, but the actual health crisis that we're facing is sexual relationships. Like right. people aren't, testosterone's lower than it ever was before. People aren't having the sex as, as they ever had before. And that's a big part of your holistic health. Mm-hmm. I know we're going off on a tangent, but it kind of body dysmorphia ties into, into that. It. Ties into it that, go, man. If your body dysmorphia, there is a very small... A, a very small chance that you're going to try and find a mate. Yeah, you know, you're like, gonna be, you don't feel good in yourself. If you don't feel good, you're not going to be sexually aroused or sexually active. And if you hide behind the walls of, okay, I can get my my, my done and my burst by watching porn, then again, that's another barrier of you wanting to change your lifestyle, changing your your outlook on your your physical appearance. But again, what are you doing? You're looking at good looking girls and guys doing mad shit. At the touch of a button, yeah, very, very easy. Now, you'll know, we'll all know the more you watch it, the more tabs dunce. you go through, it's the more dunce, videos man. you go through. Uh, you realize you realize it's a fucking issue when you're like, I'm on page 12. <laughs> Aye. What is going on here? We've all been there, Aye. but it's scary. And mm-hmm. then you're like, How much of our processing took in? It's just, but then look at and it's TikTok. all naked bodies as Aye. well, exactly. It's all naked bodies, and look at TikTok as well, right? Oh, so, how many videos do you go through? And you're like, I've just spent two hours on that. Do the math on it. When TikTok was a 15 second platform, I said it's that's it's, it's almost like I'm. We think of the videos just now where you have to watch GTA playing at the bottom oh, while mate. someone else is talking at the top. Aye. And I've found that's like that. You're watching fucking it. With my day you're now. watching it. Look at the, a fantastic advert. that's so fucking sneaky bastards is the gaming one. Where the zombies and are all that moving, and I'm like, oh, and I, I watch it. I'm like, why is it? Why is the guy not moving to the left? The, the numbers is on, the, and then I'm like, I've just watched that ad for a minute and a half. Fair play to them. I know. So, like, our brains are so wired that way, and we need to create these spaces in our life to overcome that. And 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 this, like, just 
lifting weights has its part to play, getting outdoors has its mm-hmm. part to play. It's not just one thing is going to fix this. It's all these little things that you need to work out. Your what is your own camp that's going to expire into your own fucking ecosystem of life of right. I need to get up in the morning and do this because of X. I'm going to and you work out your lifestyle and each of your lifestyles will look different, but it's going to have similarities in terms of Absolutely. the big rocks that we're going to tackle. Absolutely right. So on that note, let's wrap things up there. As always, thank you for listening to today's episode 101. Dalmatians. Maybe that's what we call today's episode. <laughs> one hundred and one episodes done and dusted. Here's to here's to the one hundred series. I don't know if we should do seasons, shall we? Nah. Just cluster them all together. If we're doing them every two every week anyway. Yeah, that's true. It's, that's not, true. it's not a season if you have a break. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's what right. it is. All the fucking pussy podcasters, eh? Shite. Part-timers, part-timers. Shite. So thank you for tuning in. As always, you know where to find us. Find us on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see us or if you're watching on YouTube, head over to Spotify or Apple Music. Make sure you subscribe, leave comments and uh, give us five-star reviews, please. Uh, and, and, look, if you do struggle with body dysmorphia, I do genuinely believe that myself and Dale, our coaching programmes, will slowly get you out of that mindset and if you want to work with one of us then obviously forms get, below yeah. I, no, just send us a wee message and even if you don't have the money to work with us now send us a wee message I do believe that our message is getting people away from that like the people that I'm coaching the people that Dale's coaching are so unfocused on their body which is which is mm-hmm. what you're, you're really looking to achieve and the, the best thing as well like our clients are seeing amazing results with their bodies with that shift and this is our message folks and and you guys are helping us promote that message through yeah. the shares the comments everything that you do to support the show uh, it, it means a lot but don't sit there if you're struggling reach out to us you know we're we're open um personalities that will never shy away for no. giving advice and it's, it doesn't need to be behind a paywall it might spur on some ideas that we're going to do for future episodes so yep. honestly reach out if you're struggling we're we're here to help it's, it's why we do what we do yep. uh, because we love it so if you do want to reach out Instagram is probably the best way you can find me at Coach Crosser you can find me at James McGinty PT that doesn't sound right doesn't it no <laughs> bye bye Roger I'm fit aye but bye bye he's gone right so until next time have a nice one